YouTube. What's up, guys? Uh, it's your boy Young Black as usual. I don't know. I just felt like making a quick video, or hopefully it'll be a quick video. Sometimes I just get on here and you know vent about certain little things. Um, as you guys well know, it's a drought right now. It's not much out to be played. No new games, no new IPs, nothing coming out right now during this council drought. Anyway, I don't know what you PC guys are playing, um, but. You know, there ain't been much to play out right now. Like, I just basically been looking at a lot of YouTube videos on um, Detoid and on um, Rev3 games. Because, you know, my man Adam Sessler is over there and he's a beast with the game reviews and his opinions about gaming. Uh, in my opinion, he's the best um, video game journalist in the game right now, if you ask me, Adam Sessler. Um, it's sad that G4 TV doesn't have him there no more. There's no more X-Play. Nothing like that, because I used to watch that all the time. I mean, I haven't been on that channel since X Play went off the air. I just totally abandoned um, G4. Just the hell with it. I mean, no, no Adam Sessler, I'm not watching it. Um, that, to me, I mean, because everybody else on there just seemed like they were, you know, characters or add-ons. I mean, they had passion about games too, but not to the level of um, Adam Sessler. You know, so I just been waiting weekly. They put videos up every um. Every Tuesday and every Friday, you know, they do live broadcasts on um, Detoid, which is a channel, Destructoid, which is one of their web, one of their YouTube channels, and on um, Rev3 Games is the other YouTube channel. So I'm just gonna give a shout out to them guys. They ain't do nothing, nothing for me personally. I'm just a, actually a fan of that YouTube channel because they do um, real gamer shit on that channel. I mean, they get sponsors and all that type of shit, but I'm. Besides all of that, the, they're real gamers. I mean, I just, I can see it in them that they're real gamers. And you can tell by their expression and their passion about video games. Uh, I just like their channel compared to anybody else. I mean, better than IGN, better than X-Play or GameSpot and all that. They just don't seem like they're buying into the mass media aspect of gaming and the, the media aspect of gaming too much. They're coming from a, a perspective where... It's more of a a, a, a a personal preference in styles of gaming and their opinions on gaming. They're not letting the, the industry, not so much so, depict um, their personal opinions about video games. And I respect that about that channel because a lot of the time, a lot of the times you see these um, websites and um, web, web reviewers and video game journalists, they jump on a bandwagon. If one guy beats up a game, they're beating up the game too just because the game has a bad rep a reputation out there. You know, just certain little things. I was like, really? I just like to see a, a bunch of opinions come together. It's like the Rev3 staff, I got to give them props for having variety in their opinions. Like they can have a round table of like maybe three people, which is not really that many people at a round table. But opinion-wise for deep criticism on video games, they can have a, a table of three people that are passionate gamers, right? And... Have all three of them will have really huge broad opinions about what they think about a topic in video gaming, and it just doesn't feel like the rest of these guys who, when they do a review or state their opinions about it, just feels flat. Like these guys' reviews and their opinions have a lot of substance to it, you know. And while I've been, you know, recuperating, as you guys know, who are fans of my channel, I always say this every time, which I'm tired of saying, I've been watching a lot of those. Reviews weekly, you know, when you don't have nothing to do and you're just constantly sitting in the house healing up and not going nowhere, um, Tuesdays and Fridays come like no tomorrow, you know, so I'm constantly watching their videos. So I said, eh, maybe I should make a video just talking about that channel, those, well, those two channels that I watch a lot on my channel, you know, um, because they deserve the views. I'm not saying I don't deserve the views, but these guys are, you know, I wouldn't say they're mass media Hollywood, but, you know, they're a, a higher echelon of game reviewers, and they deserve the attention, you know, to me they do, I mean, especially because there's no um, G4 TV video game shows anymore that I know of, unless you guys know something I don't, but that I know of, um, X-Play is gone, there's no Adam Sessler there, so what's the point in watching anything that's on there in the first place, um, to me, if um, I follow where Adam goes, basically, and he went to Rev3, and um Detoy, so that's what I watch now, you know, basically, criticism-wise. It's just there's no point in watching anything else when it comes to a reviewer. Just the way his the passion comes 
to him about gaming is the same way I feel, but he puts it into words that I just don't say. You know, I might not be able to uh, damn computer. I might not be able to say it the way he says it because he's a lot more educated than I am. You know, just to be honest. But I understand the 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 base guidelines of what he's talking about when he speaks. You you feel it as a passionate gamer. You know, games go so deep, you might not be able to put it into words for everybody to understand. And maybe he doesn't either all the time. You have to be educated sometimes just to understand what he's talking about. But I just can't say it the way he's saying it. But I can comprehend it, though. You know, so Adam Sessler is, is just a beast in, in um, the video game industry right now. I'm just happy to have somebody like him around. Um, I first came in contact with Adam Sessler um, through watching him on G4. You know, so that was my first experience seeing him do video game reviews and like, wow, this guy, he's passionate. Like, I've literally watched him do a review and going out and buy the game 10 minutes later. That's how um, influential his reviews are to me. I, just, I don't feel like he's pushing me to buy a game. I feel like the game is really good that I trust Adam enough to know that he knows a bad game from a, a horrible game, an influential game from a, you know, a uninfluential game that... When something is a, 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 a classic or a legend in the making, gaming-wise, for our era, for whatever gaming era we were in at the time, if I seen a review from him, I would go to the store and really buy a game because he told me to, you know. And that don't happen too often for me because I don't, I'm not a follower. I don't really listen to people. I stay to myself. I can count how many friends I have on probably on one hand, my real friends. I can count them on one hand. So I'm not a very influential person. I'm a very closed off type of person, um, I was just speaking to my mother and my wife earlier today, they were telling me to leave the house, get out and do some stuff, you know, you know, I, my mother hasn't seen me in like two weeks, She's a, she lives like a block away, um, I'm seclusive, I like to be by myself, you know, I don't like to be around a bunch of people because people are, people suck, to be honest with you, you know, they, they really do, um, not nothing against you guys, you know, because you guys are people, but in general, you know how people are, they, they suck. People are just aren't good people. You know, we live in a world of egos and envy and all types of bimmy ass fucking words that I don't even know right now to say. <laughs> but you know what I mean, that it makes you shy away from the human population, you know. So I stay to myself a lot, even from the ones I love. I mean, I, right now I'm home alone and I make most of the time I make my YouTube videos when I'm by myself at home. You know what I mean? I'm not, there's not kids running around or my wife is asleep or something like that. Sometimes I might, you might hear my kids in the background or I'll put them in a video every, blue, every once in a blue moon. You know, something, depending on how I feel, you know, what's going on exactly. But most of the time I'm by myself. I like to be seclusive. Um, I'm not, I've never been a person that required the company, anybody else to have a good time. Um, I do have certain people though, that are close to me that... I consider to be family. Not, they're not necessarily blood related to me, you know, like my brother Joe, um, Joe Jack, Jack Steel Boot. That's his PSN name. Send him, send him some, um, send him some friend requests and say you got a, you got his friend requests off of um, Young Blacks Facebook. Oh, Facebook! Wow, never did Facebook. Young Blacks YouTube. Um, his name is Jack Steel Boot, and then he has another one named another um, gamer tag named Bimmy Tim. B I M M Y T I M Bimmy Tim, you know. So you know, send him some friend requests. Send me some friend requests. Maybe we could play some injustice or something together. Cause you know it's a drought and there's nothing really to play right now, guys. I don't, I don't know. I'm just making a video. I don't have much to say. There's not much going on in the gaming industry besides um, EA laid off a bunch of guys recently, which really sucks for that company. Hope those guys get a job um, somewhere, you know, and support their families and all of that. Um, EA also just got the rights to Star Wars, which I thought was very weird. Um, even though they did have the, um, rights to, um, publishing some of the earlier Star Wars games, which I think was the KOTAR games, the Knights of the Old Republic games, if I remember correctly, which was some of the best games on, um, on regular Xbox, the Knights of the Old Republic game. At least the first one was epic. The second one was okay, but it had little bugs and glitches and little knickknacks, but was, they both were really good games, but the first one was fucking legendary. Um... Which I wish Xbox would bring us a downloadable already because everything else is downloadable now. They, they need to bring some of these classics back, like Knights of the Old Republic. Unless they're waiting to do like an HD upgrade version for the next Xbox or 
an HD upgraded version, excuse me, for the next Xbox that's going to be downloadable or something like that. I don't know, but um, I'm not really too excited about the next Xbox, really. You know, at least I'm not. Come on, computer. Damn light turned off. I'm not too excited about the next Xbox too much. I mean, I'm excited for the new consoles. You know, um, I'm really disappointed in Nintendo. Nintendo is doing so bad right now, guys. They're not even having a E3 press conference. I know some people are saying, like, why should they have one? The Wii U is out. What are they going to show at a press conference? Um, games. I mean, because we haven't got that yet. I'd be happy if Nintendo just came to a press conference and said, oh, you bought a Wii U? Well, here are your games. I'd be pretty happy about that because I was one of those people who bought a Wii U, and to this day, there's no games. Nothing that's worth buying the system just to play solely for having the system, which is disappointing because when you buy a brand new system and it's new and it's just coming out, you want a, 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 a title that is exclusive to the system that is worth you just getting a system for that one game. At least, or maybe a couple games that are exclusive for the system or new titles or new IPs that are being created for the system that's worth you getting the game, getting the system. You know, Zombie U was tough. And I can't, I gotta admit, when I first played it, I felt like, yeah, it's a reason to get the Wii U, if you're just on the border about line of getting it, because it is an awesome game, it does bring real survival horror back to the, um, video game industry, Zombie U, I feel like it did, um, but at the same, at the same time, considering that, the, how much the system costs, and what it really should be doing, um, I don't know, man, I, I'm on the fence with it. Like, I got rid of my Wii U because I wasn't even playing it at all. I spent the money. I played a whole bunch of Zombie U. Played the new Mario. It was good. Cool to have Mario in HD. But Mario should have been in HD. Okay? I mean, that's not really nothing to brag about, Nintendo, that you finally put Mario in HD. Mario should have been in HD. Okay? It should have been in HD a long time ago. All right? If Nintendo was smart, they need to start speeding up the development processes on their, um, their cash cow... Um, IPs, like Zelda, Donkey Kong, these games are games that, that they should be not rinse, wash, and repeating, but making sure they come around a little faster. You know, they wouldn't have this problem with the Wii U if there was a new Zelda out like right now. You know, they need to fix that and figure out what the problem is, because I want Nintendo to succeed. I don't want them to fail. You know, I grew up playing Nintendo. We all grew up playing Nintendo. They were, they're, they're the reason why we play console games. There weren't no console games unless Nintendo was doing it. You know, I mean, I, who doesn't remember waking up Christmas morning and opening up the Nintendo or the SNES? Those were like humongous deals for Christmas when they came out those years. Okay, I got an NES for one year for Christmas. Another Christmas year, I got an SNES. And after that, I got a, um, Sega Genesis was after that. And I had both of them, SNES and Sega Genesis, right? Then after that, Sega CD. You know, I didn't get into Sega CD era and all that type of stuff. Um, then you had the Saturn, which I eventually got one, but after it was really expensive and popular, I had a Saturn at some point. Um, then the PS1, of course, which was like the really beginning of the dominant console age to me, anyway. The PS1. Oh, I, I kind of forget about the, um, GameCube and the, um, N64, but, you, you know, they were there, too. Um, they weren't as strong as, like, when P the PS1 came out. The PS1 was, like, the real start of the push for councils to me like people really realize that you know this we can actually play good games at home um in a different way on a council you know and they put a, a dvd player in everybody's house at the same time which was very revolutionary for a council at the same time you know no more cartridges um you could play a game and you could also play this new form of video called dvd that you could just go to the store and watch an awesome movie and then play a game at the same time, which is revolutionary, you know, Sony did they think, you know, I think Nintendo would be first in revolutionizing the industry, and then maybe Sony would be second, um, and then, well, I don't know, fucking Xbox 360 would be a close third, I guess, but they're revolutionizing the internet, because besides that, I don't really see much they revolutionized, I mean, we've got all types of games on PlayStation, there's all types of games on Xbox, but there's no game on Xbox that couldn't have been done on the PlayStation. There's games on PlayStation that couldn't be done on the Xbox. For example, Metal Gear Solid 4. Um, Hideo Kojima recently just released a, a press statement saying that because they're about to re-release the Metal Gear games in the trilogy, 
you know, for, um, what is it, some type of collection or whatever, and he's saying that the reason why this new collection of, you know, a bunch of Metal Gear games is about to come out, and it's not coming out on the Xbox or the, it's not coming out on the Xbox 360 at all, right, so that's probably going to be Metal Gear Solid, I'm hoping it'll be Metal Gear Solid 2, 3, 4, Rising, but you know, it's called the Collection, some type of Metal Gear new collection that's about to come out. I don't remember exactly um, what it entails, because I don't think they told us exactly what's going to be in it, but it's only going to be a PlayStation exclusive, which is like, okay, we just got our Metal Gear collection, an HD collection, not too long ago, so they're about to release another one, and it's going to be... Uh, probably a short limited release of them. It's probably like a collector's edition version and all that type of crap. But um, it's only coming on PlayStation. And Hideo said that if they were to put Metal Gear Solid 4, which is the reason why it's not coming on Xbox, on the Xbox, it would have been so many discs, it would have been ridiculous. I think it was over like seven discs or some shit like that, he said, or maybe ten. It was a lot of discs. I don't remember how many discs exactly, but I remember I read the article and I was like, wow, it would be that many discs. That game is so ahead of the gaming curve and the tech and the information they had to put into the game, still to this day, Metal Gear Solid 4 still could not be put on an Xbox 360. You know, so that just shows the, the development process and the, the, the heart and everything that they put into this one game that is probably one of the most influential games in console gaming in a long time. You know, Metal Gear Solid, Metal Gear Solid 4 is going to stand the test of time. Um... Just like the other Metal Gear games do, too. You know, if not for gameplay, just for story. You know, but it's going to stand the test of time. Especially because of that statement he made about how it only can be done on the PlayStation. He made, he built it from the ground up just for the PlayStation. Um, but anyway, besides that, what are you guys playing right now during the drought? You know, that's what I want to know. Because I've been playing a lot of different games. There's nothing else really to play right now. Move that out the way. There's a lot of stuff that you could be playing. I mean, you'd be catching up on games that came out, which would have been smart. I wish I would have did that. I wish I would have let DMC and, you know, all the other games that recently just came out, just let them sit there now so I could have a bunch of games just stacked up to play. Because I did that. I bought all those games and left them here to play, and I played them, you know, slowly. But now that there's nothing to play, you like, tomorrow I could go buy a game tomorrow. I try to buy a game like every Friday I go buy, try and buy a game. You know, but there's nothing to buy. So I was like, what the hell am I going to go do? I could go buy some back catalog titles. I'm thinking about buying um, Fallout um, New Vegas because I never really um, got into playing Fallout New Vegas because when it came out, it had a lot of glitches and shit like that. But now that I've been doing a lot of research on it, people love that game. Um, and I'm a big, I'm a Fallout fan. Fallout 3 hooked me. That was my first Fallout game, Fallout 3. I didn't play all the old PC versions of Fallout and all that, but... Fallout 3 was an amazing game to me, and I really loved it, you know, so maybe I'll get New Vegas and try and dive into that for the Xbox 360, because you know you got to buy Fallout, it's got to be for Xbox, even though they make a PlayStation version, but I don't know, but New Vegas came out after Fallout 3, maybe they made it so that both versions look pretty close and function pretty close to each other, but I remember when I bought Fallout 3 for the um, Xbox 360, and then I seen it running on the PlayStation 360 version. The 360 version ran better, which happens a lot with, with Bethesda games. Because I also got Skyrim. I bought Skyrim for PS3, and oh my god, I wanted to kill myself playing it. It was so horrible. Stuttering frame rate, loading times, and all types of glitches were galore. And then the 360 version was above and beyond better for um, the reason that the Xbox has um, DirectX in the system and the PS3 doesn't. And those games were used solely using a lot of DirectX stuff in the game. So it would be good if you had that built into your system so it could function well. The DirectX does not function well on PlayStation at all. So when you see a Bethesda game, 9 times out of 10, um, when it's something like a Skyrim or a Fallout, you want to get it on a Xbox console because that's probably where they're going to be developing the, the, you know, the, the regular version of the game off of. And they'll port it to the, the PlayStation is what happens. So every time I see those games, Skyrim, Elder Scrolls rather, and Fallout, Mass Effect, which I'm playing right now, which is freaking amazing. 
Um, I'm playing Mass Effect 1 right now because I got the trilogy. I had the trilogy here for a while, you know, but I'm just starting to get into it again. You know, somebody was like, how come you didn't get it for, um, yeah, the disc is in my Xbox. How come you didn't get it for PlayStation? I'm like, because Mass Effect is an Xbox game. Mass Effect is one of those games that was developed for the Xbox from the ground up. So why should I get it for the PlayStation? Just because the PS3 is more powerful, he's telling me, and Mass Effect 2 looks a little bit. I'm like, okay, I don't really care about all that. Mass Effect 2 might look a little slightly bit better for the PlayStation 3, as people say, which I don't really believe that much, but it was built for the Xbox. So as much as I'm not an Xbox fan, like I said, you have to give Xbox Day props. Halo, Mass Effect, Skyrim, those games were built for the Xbox. Those are Xbox games. Those are games that are worth buying the system for. And they're not small games. They're huge games in this gaming era. I mean, they're, they're game changers for real. You know, and that reason alone gives the system purpose, even though I'm not a fan of Xbox like that. Now, as I was saying earlier, I wish Nintendo had more games like that. You know, they gotta stop releasing systems because they're about to go the way of Sega real quick. Okay, they gotta stop releasing systems and not making sure they have a killer rap. I don't care if it's fucking Donkey Kong Country 3. Something that is super fun, that is enough, that is so Nintendo that I can't not have a Wii U. You understand? Something. It has to make sense. You can't just put out a new system and act like it's a 3DS and little 10-year-olds are gonna go buy it and your profits are gonna shoot through the roof. Because with a home console, it's a dedication. You have to make sure that there's something there you know, the meat and the potatoes for the modern gamer, because that's what we, we, we want to buy the new products. I put my money into that, and it was a waste, man. Like, I'm disappointed in Nintendo because of that, because I love Nintendo. I'm a Mario fan, but the new Mario just felt like fluff. It felt like they could have made this regular Mario without the HD, and I wouldn't even have cared. Why was the HD such a big deal? It was clear, yeah, but it, it didn't really matter to me. It was still a regular Mario fucking game. Something. They have to do something. Independent IPs from third parties, something. I don't want to port everything I'm playing on PlayStation and Xbox for the Wii U. I don't need a port of them. I can just play them on the Xbox or the, or the um, PlayStation. Why am I buying a Wii U to play a ported version of a wide-ass controller? <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. See, I'm getting flustered already. But you guys know what I mean. Just certain things just drive me fucking crazy as a gamer. You know, I see little things, and I'm like, come on, Nintendo, you can do better than that. If they don't, next next um year, the Wii U will be on $100, and we'll, we'll be hearing press announcements from Nintendo saying they're not making no more consoles, except for portable ones, because that's what, that's what it looks like is going to happen. They sell so many DSs in every shape or form, it's fucking flabbergasted, it's ridiculous. Everybody has a fucking DS. I've seen grandmothers, little kids... Grown men, everybody has a fucking DS, okay? That that know about the DS and are into some type of media, um, gaming technology or you know, just little casual shit. Get casual gadget people. Everybody has one, but the Wii U was just like, who the fuck? Well, why? I don't know. It just doesn't fit into anything. And they tried to revolutionize the industry with the screen and all of that, but they they did. But I just felt like they took a punch in the gut to do it. You know, I understand you want to, every time you do something, you want to innovate and make it stand out to a point that you guys are changing gaming history every time you do it. But sometimes you can't, you can't cater to what your personal preference is because some, at, at some point it becomes selfish and then the consumer gets left out. And that's what happened. The consumer didn't need to get left out. They need to think more about us and not thinking about what they wanted to represent for themselves within the gaming industry, which is fine, but you have to make sure that we're satisfied too as gamers. It's ridiculous. The launch, the launch titles for the Wii U were abysmal. I mean, they were they were non-existent basically. If you didn't have like Zombie U, or they had what a Call of Duty was on there, it's like I could play that better on my Xbox or my fucking play. Why do I want to buy Call of Duty for the Wii U? At this point, you got to figure. If I'm buying a Wii U, I probably already have an Xbox or a PlayStation or both. So this is like an abysmal buy just to put this game here to make me play a game that I've been probably been playing already. It just doesn't make any sense. That, Batman, Darksiders, they were just pointless. And those are like some of the best games that came out for launch. And they're some of the best games that's out right now. 
There's nothing on this console to play. All you guys who are keeping your Wii U's right now, you're sitting on them waiting for a Zelda or a Kirby or a Mario Kart. You're waiting for these games to come out. And to be honest with you, the system is doing so bad, you might not never see them. They might not never make these games because people aren't supporting the council for it to make any money. I mean, EA even said, was it EA? I read something, I think it was EA or um, another game company that said that, oh, it was the Crisis, the Crisis 3. That's what it was, Crytek. They said that they were going to put Crisis 3 on the Wii U. It could hold it. I mean, I, I might not have looked as good as the um, PS3 or the Xbox version, or maybe it would have had a, a dicey frame rate or some um, jaggies, not jaggies, or some, um, what do you call it when the screen moves and it's like doing that cutting shit? I forgot what it's called. But it might have had a little bit of those type of issues, but they didn't even bother putting it there because there's not enough counsel sitting in people's houses. Nobody's buying Wii U. So they said that they had the game ready to go, was ported, but they never dropped it on the system because the system didn't sell well enough. And I was like, I mean, Nintendo sacrificed that because they, they wanted to go to left field with what they wanted to have. And they're so Japanese, Nintendo. I mean, they, 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 they're Japanese to the point that it's like, here's our product, take it or leave it. You can't do that nowadays. Especially when you got the other two companies, Nintendo and um, Xbox, coming out. And people are, you know, spending their hard-earned money and they feel satisfied with these two systems. And then you got this other system where it's like, they're kind of retro and old school and feeding off of nostalgia from back in the day. And meanwhile, I got these other councils where I can be playing Skyrim, slaying fucking dragons and... Being some type of super mega powerful wizard, all types of whatever the fuck I want to be. Too many options are there. And then you got fucking retro Nintendo box sitting here. And they're trying to go off nostalgia from like 20 years ago with all these IPs that they made a long time ago. Like Mario, Zelda, Kirby, Luigi. Like who wants a Luigi game anymore? Like really? That, that was dead during Luigi's Mansion when that didn't even sell. They're still making them shit. I just don't get it. Like, come on, Nintendo. Nintendo needs to be working with, like, Hideo Kojima. Make a new Metal Gear. Twin Snakes was awesome for the GameCube, man. Give us an exclusive Metal Gear for the game, for the Wii U. You know, get in contact with these developers that are worth fucking talking to. And bring us some real games again, Nintendo. Or you're gonna die out. Alright? Like, listen to me. This is real gamer shit. You're gonna die out. If you do not do what you need to do to support us as gamers, I don't give a fuck how many Mario games you play, how many classic Mario, how classic Mario is, you're going to be on, Mario ass will be on PlayStation just like Sonic, and he will be a hoe, a system whore, just like Sonic, if you guys do not ship up, or you, or, or shape up, or you will ship out, rather, you know, it's going to happen, this is what happens when these counts, when these systems, when these companies get too full of themselves and think they can support themselves off of, you know, oh, Zelda's going to, is a cash cow. People love Zelda so much. They get so cocky. And that's very Japanese. You know, the Japanese, not to say that the Japanese people or Asian people are cocky, because they're not. Okay? But they believe in the integrity of their products so much that they'll put all their stock and their life into them, and then things won't, won't um, happen so well for the simple fact that they don't want to innovate. They really believe in what they solely made individually. And, and they love it that much that they don't want to change and, and put something on there that is totally left field from their personalities. But you're not making the games for yourself, guys. You're making them for us. Nintendo needs to take a step back from what they think we should be playing and give us what we should be playing according to what the industry is presenting to us. Or they'll sink. And I know you guys agree with me. This is just real gamer shit. Okay? It's... it's the evidence is out there. When was the last time you heard somebody talk about, oh, I got the new Wii U, whatever? N never. There's always something out on the consoles. All right? Nobody's sitting around right now playing the Wii U unless it's like somebody's girlfriend, somebody's mom, um, a, a Nintendo fanboy, okay, which is like here nor there, okay, or like somebody's child or children. And that's a lot. They should have a lot of casual shit on there. I'm not buying a Wii U for Netflix or anything like that, man. I'm buying it for, to play games. Give me some games. But um, real gamers stand up. I'm about to go play some Mass Effect. Have some fun playing that. Back catalog. You know, something old because it's a drought right now. A real gamer stand up. I'll see you guys soon, man.